Right. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to my talk this evening. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, type classes and functions. Uh, fundamentally, everything is uh, relative to Scala, and sometimes a bit reference to Java. Right. Okay, uh, let's begin. So, who am I? Uh, my name is Tekui. I work with a software company that manages the uh, DApps trading platform. So, I've been playing with uh, functional. My interest was in functional, progra uh, functional programming when I uh, started with functional programming because of Scala in a way because uh, at the time was uh, I was a Java developer then Scala came out and then it looks uh, different but not different and so something interesting so then as I discovered more okay this is those those th those are the things I call functional programming then as I go dig deeper then you become I found out there's Closure, there's Scala, and there's others, Haskell, for example. Right. So then uh, along the way, I discovered that uh, I prefer statically type language compared to dynamically type languages. So I just focus on Scala at the moment. Right. So the objective of this talk is to, uh, it's not about how to use cats on Scala, Z, or things, things. I, this talk is about why you need them. And uh, the aim is to hopefully after this talk, probably you could uh, see the advantage of functional uh, uh, functional Scala programming, and go ahead doing the functional route, and then how this library comes in. Right, this is an informal talk, so I may have a <laughs> right. Uh, if there's a mistake or any with my slides, just let me know. And along the way, you have questions, just uh, a quick one, probably answer. If it's a long one, probably we can chat after the presentation. All right, thank you. So the topics are uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, type classes, monoids, functors, monads, functions, <coughs> and more monads. It's just a rough topic. The, actually, the, the, you can see in the title, the, the two topics are type classes and functions. Monads, functors, all these are derivations from type classes, right? As you see. Okay, uh, if you are not aware of what type classes are, so uh, type classes are, you can, in a way, they, they are like interfaces, you, you, OO interfaces, right? If you're coming from object oriented programming. So um, if you're coming from Java, we use a lot of interfaces when we come to Spring, we use, when you use Spring. So the next thing about interfaces, uh, we talk about IOC, right? Uh, so it's very useful for us. And type classes is not much different from that in terms of usage. And it actually has some IOC, but instead of during runtime, it would check it during compilation time. So you will have uh, wrong types during uh, compile. Uh, uh, wrong, giving the wrong types, uh, then the compiler will com complain and uh, fail and fail fail to fail to compile. And they, uh, if you compare to Spring, Spring you will sort of everything compiles. Then when you run Spring, you kick off, and then the next thing you know, it it says there's a long list of errors that uh, your your objects uh, injection doesn't match or for some reason or not found things like that. So type classes is if, if it's not found during compilation, it will just tell you, so, so you don't have to go through the runtime. All right. So this gives us a lot of benefits. Uh, like one thing is you won't have, uh, if you follow through, then you won't have things like null pointer exceptions. Okay, let's begin with a simple case. Uh, quite, quite a bit of, uh, not a lot, but quite, quite a bit of codes. So but very simple codes. Right? So, I begin on the left side, then I will go on to the right side. So, say we have a function max that uh, take the maximum of two values. So, max double double. So, if a bigger than b is a, else b, right? So, if you take least, sometimes you want to compare the size, which, which least is bigger. So, okay, take for example, okay, max one double, two double. So, answer is two double. Max one integer and two integer, but you still get a double, right? Because this is a uh, polymorphism. 
right? So let's go with the list. But the thing about here is the uh, wait, uh, all right. Oops. Things that uh, what I dislike is here. You will you will give a integer, and you get a double, right? It doesn't make sense. And this is just only numbers. What happens you have something like class, more complex uh, objects. So if you use type class, so ordering is, 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 is a type class, is a sort of the interf, uh, you show, I will show you later, so sort of the traits. So here, the way we, how do we use it is as defined on, on the red dot, the function at the red dot there. So we, Basically, we put an A, and A is sort of a odd ordering type, right? Ordering is basically just say uh, who who is that's an order, okay? Either bigger or smaller, dep uh, depending which comes first, which comes second, depending on how how you want to do the comparison. Basically, it's about comparison. So there's uh, another one called orderable in Scala. Uh, in Scala, there's another object or traits called orderable. So orderable is slightly different uh, from ordering in a sense that you, you actually implement ordered. Right? You don't, for ordering, you don't implement ordering. Right? So the effectively is when you get a max, one double, two double, you get two double. If you get a max of integer two and one, then you get two, right? Same with strings, uh, string, then of course, uh, a, 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 uh, small letter A is bigger, <coughs> bigger than capital B. All right, uh, then we we'll come to uh, list ordering. So this is about, uh, order by, by the list, list size, right? All these are uh, pretty much uh, is, is in, in, in the Scala menu. So this how is how Scala do uh, type classing. Okay. Okay, let's, uh, moving on. This is something like, uh, I want to combine two objects. Right, very frequently when we are in Java, we have things like this. We we want to combine two things. Okay, this, this is a simple. This is a very this is a simple case where two integers add together, two string adds together, and sometimes when you well, when I first start off with Scala, then I I have problem like this. Right, I have a two of the same function name, but it differs by just the type that uh, type of the 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 elements, the type of elements in the list. So because of JVM, uh, it will discard whatever the uh, type parameter there. So it, after compilation, end up as object. So the compiler doesn't allow you to do so. But just assume that you can do so. You have, say now, you have, what you see here, you have two separate, two, two different type of elements, integer and string and one list. So if you want to do further, go on further, you have a set, for example. So how many functions you have to define? So two times two is four, right? Four functions, right? Let's say I, I add another element, maybe a Boolean. So two times three <coughs> is six. It, it's a, it's a Cartesian, Cartesian product, right? Okay, so when you come to type classing, first you declare the interface, the trait. Then you define the combi the, the, uh, the functions that go with the uh, uh, that you're going to, to going to interface with. The actual working is at the implicit there, appendable, right? But a, what is a? You don't know what's a, right? So, but the thing is appendable dot ev appendable, right? Uh, dot append a and b. That's it. Then what is it? Means a and a and give me back an a. All right? What's a? Okay. So next we define what's a. 
here we use uh, implicit to do so, right? Because that's, uh, that's how these two things link up here and here, how these two things link up. So you're implicit in the parameter and you declare implicit values. So here we have uh, integer, integer, a plus b, string and string. This is a plus b is string con concatenation. And finally, we have this list appendable, which basically append two lists, all right? Then, uh, okay, I'll come to that later. So effectively, if I want to make a call, so once I define this, I can have a similar syntax as foo. So if I replace foo with bar, it, still, it works. Because once I put in a is a, a string and b string, then a, the a here, the a here will become string, right? Then the compiler, this is actually during compilation time. So the compiler will look at string, look for string. So the next thing is what you want to do is string. Oh, okay, you want to concatenate. The same with uh, integer, look for integer, a plus b, you get back whatever, a, one, one and two, then you get back three. So it give you precise integer. So if I have a double, then it will actually give you back a double. All right? So, okay, as you go on this one, this is a bit different. There's uh, sometimes at least you want to do it sub differently. You want to concatenate two lists, right? Or you want to zip, sort of uh, add them up, like for example, this example here. Okay. So, sorry, uh, this full, actually now I'm talking about bar, okay, using bar function here to, but with the same parameters. So you have a list one, two, three, and list four, five, six. Okay. So what we're doing here is we want to add up each element. So you get a list of five, seven, nine, right? But, but sometimes you don't want to do that. You want to actually concatenate the list, just like uh, here, one, one and two, you, uh, you add up with three, so you get a list of one, two, three. So it very much depends on what, how you define your list here. You want to concatenate, or you want to add them up element by element, right? This how I mean. These are the implementation. You use a zip and you use a map, and you you get adding each el uh, the element together. All right. So, uh, any questions so far here? Okay. Uh, next, uh, we have expression problem. Expression problem is something that, uh, in summary, in, in short, is you say you have a you you remember that uh, Java have a list interface, so you array list extend from list, you have linked list extend from list, so if you want to add one additional met or you change anything in the interface, you have to change in the implementation class, right? So. Ex that's where sometimes it's problematic, sometimes it's not. It depends how, how the code are or, uh, organized and who owns the code, right? So you have maybe you, at some, at some point, maybe you don't even own, you don't own the interface. Somebody owns the interface. When they change, you have to change. So sometimes it's a bit problematic. Okay. In this example, I use uh, transferable as, uh, as my initial interface or traits. So Basically, to plane means an instance convert to a plane or convert to an XML. And um, so I will take fruits as my example, case class apple, case class orange, and a third party library, a tomato. So the last function is a just to convert them either to XML or to plane based on the object. So, but this one is transferable. 
this this is basic uh, OO, so it implements transferable, so it works here. Right. Then what happens if you have a requirement that you want to, have, you know, those days you have very very uh, X, very XML centric. Now you have very JSON centric, so you want to add a JSON method. So a new method have to add to have to add to the interface transferable, and anything below that has to be changed. Apple has to be changed, orange has to be changed, right? And for example, even orange, you, you, you don't want to serialize it to JSON, but you still have to put a dummy method for some reason. And tomato even worse, you can't change because you don't even have a source code. So yeah, the point four is just, yeah, you write another functions to, to do that. Right, so how we solve it is we use type class. Again, transferable T. We have uh, apple orange and tomato again. So what I do now is I, this, the left side will be the initial cut of the code that I have, okay? So when, when, it, when we was first, the first requirement was to, okay, you have to serialize apple and orange to plain or to XML, right? That's how that's you do the same thing here, right? This is the interface, and you have the implicits, right? Implicits Apple. So to you have to implement the the, fun, the methods, right? To plane. So you have an Apple. How do you display an Apple in a plain text? Then next you have XML. How you display XML app, app, uh, Apple to XML? So it goes for orange. Oh, sorry, I think it is a typo here. It's supposed to be orange here, right? So then next, the we have the the, the JSON to JSON serialization requirement. So here, I will just add on another J, uh, uh, implicit value for JSON. Sorry, I define a, a new interface which is same level as this, right? I define this. And well, I don't need orange. Orange, orange doesn't need JSON, so I can skip that. For tomato, even though I don't own the source code, I can actually ser serialize JSON, uh, tomato to JSON, right? So, yeah. So you, and then again, for tomato, do you want to serialize it to plain or to XML? It doesn't really matter if it's up to you, optional. So of this is just uh, the method to serialize things. The gist of it is here, all, all these, uh, the greens and the red. The blues are just the, 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 the uh, helper functions. Right, as, as you can see here, there's a, it, it's not really tied down like, like interface, it's, it's very much uh, loose coupling. It's entirely up to you how, how, how do you want to make it. All right. Any questions so far? Okay. Here. Let's uh, talk about mappable for a moment. So uh, I s suppose you are familiar with uh, this. You have a list of one, two, three. You map every, every, every element increased by one. If you list an empty list, well, you get an empty list. All right. If you map a string, you get an array of chars, actually. 98, 9900 9, is a char of uh, B, C, D. Right? So same goal with option. We have a map. Right. So uh, then this actually, uh, do you know why, why this can't have, why this, there's a compilation error here? Anyone? Because it's now. Last string. So it's like nothing. Yes, correct. Good. Okay. Here. Uh, what happens if I have a bonus class that I want to map it, right? I mean, it's very, it's very, it's a very nice map. Is a very nice function to use, right? But I can't, right? Map doesn't. 
uh, bonus doesn't have a map function and you can't change that say for example this this bonus came and again came from a third party you can't change that so what can you do is probably I'll skip that uh, oh uh, I don't know okay uh, before I go to the implementation there's something I want to uh, talk about is a uh, higher kind type so high, higher kind type is uh, if, if you look at it, list is actually a type constructor. What is a type constructor? Type constructor is, is like uh, list. It, it's actually, it's not the final type. It, it requires a type parameter to become the final type. So here, like I say here, in string, list in string, all these are types, or fin final types, right? So list A, option A are type constructors because they are not final yet. They still have a variable A inside there. Right. So all these things, uh, so higher kind type is means that you can actually abstract least, even least. You see here we extract the elements A, right? Whatever element inside the list, we abstract it. We, we're not going to deal with it yet. But uh, we can even abstract the container. Okay, so can be uh, so when once we abstract abstract it, we call that f. So this the foo is actually the a concrete. F is just abstract. U also another abstract, which we are going to fill in with implicits later, as we did before with with uh, previous examples. All right. So, okay. say I have a bonus, cl bonus class, right? With an A, A is a, again is a type variable. So I have a functions text ten, text twenty, right? Basically, just it is a very simple implementation. Then has something mappable that says that I give a map. Uh, functionality to something right as you see earlier uh, here like appendable I can make something that two combine it's like an interface right when you when you inherit an interface you, you get that power so same here appendable if, if I uh, include appendable in, in my functions I will, I will get the power, right, whichever you, you include in. So here I'm, I'm giving something that uh, a map, a map uh, capability to, to a, uh, con to, to a uh, op uh, con uh, con uh, a container, for example. So bonus actually is a container because it has a, a it contains something which is a, right? Which is a variable. So as we go down, then you see that I just implement bonus, right? How do I do? How do I deal with bonus? Is uh, map is just go from uh, okay? I have two two variable here, a and b. So here it just says that wherever uh, bon this, 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 FA is, is a type of bonus A the next thing is the function right F to uh, is A to B and the return value is bonus B so here I already cut down F I already say that F is fixed to bonus for mappable so the only Last, last, last variable here, the type variable is A and B, okay, which is going to fill in when you make the call. Okay, again, you must have one function here to include the mappable. Right? So you take in A and B. Right? So uh, this is just a function for calculation for bonus, whether you get a bonus or not. Okay, 
Uh, don't read too much into the implementation. It's just a simple implementation. Right. So uh, how we're going to use it is Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Here. Ah, uh, sorry. So, the first thing is I want to create whether I get a what do I get a cash bonus for year two thousand, right? Here. So it's my year. Is a is a even year. I will get a hundred one dollar. Uh, 101 double so we can so or else I will get a zero right so here will be I will get a bonus of 101 so what's next I tax right you you run a function against that bonus all right so here B is the double inside so if you see here okay these two are interlinked because of this uh, implicit all right so here you look at here fa which is your double uh, your bonus f is your function so again how they are you break down further how is it going to be is you take the amount fa now become bonus dot amount which is here right f is tax tax 10 take a double and tax if it's above 100 it will tax 10 10 percent right so you return a uh, a double and you end up with bonus 90.9 because once this function executed you left with 90.9 .9 and you go back to bonus the final answer the final class the, the final result that exists that return from there is bonus 90.9 .9. follow yeah, a few a few indirection point okay so this one's the same if i i do the same thing but i i use a different formula so here you see that uh I've, uh, let's say I have another class, okay? Share. This go by go by uh, not mon not money it's by units, for example. Same thing. If it's a uh, if it's a uh, even year, I will get a bonus share of one thousand. One thousand, right? Okay. So I do the same here. If I want to get back. The amount of money I get tax up the amount of money that uh, after tax, so this is what I do. First, I will do this, right? Share of this. Then each share say this unit says that each share is twenty twenty uh, twenty dollars, right? So year two thousand bonus share two thousand, which uh the bon share bonus for year two thousand. Is a thousand shares multiplied by twenty, so you got twenty thousand, and you tax the ten percent. Uh, I think yeah, the function name is wrong. Sorry, uh, you you tax ten percent, so that's your answer, right? But this one look a bit like uh, a bit clumsy, so we can improve it. We can actually use implicit class to actually change. Uh, make the class to be mappable so that you could write something like this okay cash bonus for year 2000 you map then you t tax it then you you get your final answer the final final fi uh, what was after what, what was your cash after tax so you see this is something similar to what we had before the lease Right, it's very easy to for, easy to follow here. So, the whole chunk of this is to make it uh, readable. Right. Why you go through the trouble is because, well, sometimes you 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 can't change bonus, you can't change shares. Right? This 
this object doesn't belong to you, or maybe it's already too deep rooted that you it's very risky to change. So this outside of whatever it is, it would it has its own. So far okay, <laughs> right? So the same for share bonus. If you want to map, I map. Uh, I do twice, right? Like same here. There's two F map here, which is doing twice, and here I can map twice. First, I map. I want to calculate how much a unit, and the next map is to tax the amount. Any question? Okay, so we look look at the next one, uh, binable, which extend for mappable. So, a uh, again these are the okay. We have something called flat map, pure, and map. Map is a familiar one. It comes from mappable. So basically, you just map something. So what is not implement is flat map and pure. Okay. Yes. Um, okay, so maybe you're covering this later on, mm. and, and if you are, uh, stop me. Okay. Um, but I, I, I get the impression that now you're, you're, you're kind of explaining <coughs> what type plus is, mm -hmm. so that you can show how these are used in CATS yes. further on. Is that yes. right? Yes. Okay, so if, if you're going to jump from mappable, which is, I don't, I don't want to get ahead of some other folks in the room, it's, mm. it's call a spade a spade, it's a functor. Okay? Mm. So if you're going from mappable, which I understand maybe you just want to keep that uh, very general now without yeah. conflating terms such as functor. Yep. But you go from that to bindable, which now has flat map and pure. Mm. So maybe you want, want to use the. Yes, correct. Yeah, right. I actually I, I try to find a better word for monad. I couldn't. So I guess binable someone can relate to it. Okay. Right? Okay. Uh, maybe yeah, some, some people from JavaScript maybe they can relate to it. I, I couldn't find 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 a better word. I, I, I agree mm. with doing that, mm. but you might want to, to put that connection there. Yes, I, I would do that. I would do that in I would, Yes. When other folks go out and encounter libraries that have these things. They're not going to see them called mappable and bindable. They're going to see them called category yeah. theory. Yes, correct. Precisely. Uh, I'm I'm going to clarify that in, in uh, two more slides. Right. Okay. So we have uh, well I guess the secret is out. Bindable is a monad. <laughs> I guess it, if you know it then you see the signature you you know it already. There's, there's no way to hide it. No matter how, what you call it, right, you say call it a spade. Even if you don't call spade a spade, it's already it's, it's very clear it's a spade. Yeah. Right? You look at the, the signatures. So uh, probably the gist of it, I, th I think I think what I'm showing this is I trying the best to explain monad because when I first come to these terms, i I'm afraid of, of the terms itself. Why 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 a functor not a function? How they are related, right? So I got scared, and then it took me a long time to 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 nail it down. So uh, and then the most important thing, maybe this uh, what you see here. Th these are the mechanics of it, right? But what is precisely what you're trying to achieve is you try to make it like this, so that it's very it's readable. Because the concept once you is is maybe now is a bit confusing, but once you grab it, right? So you look at this side here, it's very straightforward. But before you come to here, there's this step which uh, well quite obvious. Uh, I mean obvious as in uh, it's already stated in the Scala that this syntax is uh, is the uh, this is the sugar coated syntax for this. Because this one once compiled, this will become this and compile further. Right, these two is equivalent. So, the point of all these, uh, the mappable and bind, bindable, functor and monad, is you come come to this conclusion. So basically, how you read it is because 
after you've written your code, two months, three months down the road, only got snow, what is it? Right? So you try to make it as clear as possible so that not just you, but most people can understand it. So here basically say, I want to share bonus for year 2000. So every share is $20 and I'm going to tax 10%. So what's your final cash value that you have? This thing a bit, uh, this pure, all these things are practically, uh, you can read up after this if you are not clear. But I hope that end of the day, this is your, this, this works, this actually makes it simple for, for you. This syntax. Well, I guess if you if you use a lease, uh, I think you do without without knowing you are using more not. Let's say you have options, 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 and you you do a four for comprehension for options, right? You have a whole list of it. Actually, you're doing something monadic, but not knowing it, but it's quite useful, right? You don't have to like, well, if else, else if you know that, that kind of thing. So you, you don't. Uh, it's it's easy to read and easy to follow. Definitely the first time round is, is not easy. Right, okay. Uh, so yep. So appendable actually is mon monoid. Mapable is functo. Functo is actually a, a higher kind type, means that it is uh it's its type is the, the one that is contained is a container. It is a container for a container, so it's a higher kind type. Right? Monoid. So it's soft. Uh, type classes solve expression problems. Well, you give it uh, the exact types that return, right? I think this one is uh, if you have used numeric, then uh, Scala numeric. I think you 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 appreciate it. Uh, you, you the the exact value that you get it you to, to return the exact value. So then the last one is to be qualified as monoid, functo, or monad. You have the certain laws that you have to follow. Well, you're not, not to worry too much of this because uh, we can read it up later on. Why I'm bringing this up is because, say for example, um, you, after this then you think that, oh, everything with a flat map, map is a functor or, mon uh, 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 or a monad, right? You have the laws to govern them and if it passes the law, then they are functor and monad. So next thing I talk about functions. So uh, functions programming is about programming with functions, because uh, everything else, like immutable, whatever the definition, immutable, must be uh, uh, recursions and all these things are actually because of these three uh, characteristic. A function must be total, means that for every input there must be an output. There's no exception. Even there's an error. So pure. Basically, it just says that whatever provided in the parameters, it just uses that. Or choose not to use it is OK. You provide more than you need is OK. But you cannot use more than what is provided. Right? And of course, you cannot do I.O., for example. And deterministic means it's always return the same value. It's every time you call it, a thousand times, a million times, a billion times, it's still the same value. Right? So what's so hard about it? Uh, this is a simple function, at i and j. So 1 and 2, 3, 10, 20, 30, 1, 2, 3. Right? So what happens if I have, I think this, most of the time we don't, we are not so lucky, we just have these simple functions. We have things that throw exceptions at you. Right? This function I hit 4. So it's a simple function. Wherever you give me a 4, I just throw a, an exception. Okay. I hit 1, 1, I hit 20, 20, I hit 1, 1, fine. I hit 4, you throw an exception. So it violates the condition 1, which is so, not supposed to throw an exception. But in this case, what, what can I do? Uh, if you look at it, because uh, sometimes I, when you write a function, you can get away with, uh, if this function always return positive value. Anything negative, I could use it as a error, mes error code or error message, whatever, right? Then, but here you, 
you look at this function, it's actually and comp, uh, it, it's actually the the range is all the whole the whole range of integers are taken. There's no way you can put a negative there to to indicate it's an error. Uh, negative can be a can be an answer. So if you do that, then what else do I have here? I don't want to use exceptions. Then I do things like this. It's kind of silly, right? If I have a four return four, then my so I just put a x, right? This this is a silly function, right? So and then it doesn't tell me that it, it it doesn't like four. It just oh four okay still still a good value. So we can make it better. We can use options, right? For every functions that uh, for every integer that you give I return some something some X and if the four I return a none so then you can check that whether it's, it's, it's a it's a sum or it's a none if it's a none means you well that's an error okay or sometimes you want more descriptive then you use either either you can you can return a descriptive uh, error message for example so the here not necessary to return a string you can return an exception if you want to right so we and the convention is whatever is right whatever is is the right answer you call it right so here I call it right for left use it usually reserved for error message but again, either this is one of the usage for either, but it, it's not necessary. It, it could be both. Both is a correct. Left, left could be correct. Right could be correct. But usually, the convention is is how you do it. All right. So if you are right, you can map it. If you left, it will just drop, and then we will just say it will not map it. It will just say well. You return left. I hate four. It's always right four, right? Yes. Huh? It doesn't return the right x. It returns right four. Uh, which one? Right. This uh, below the descriptor. Yeah, function itself. Yes. It, it, it right. Right. right next. Left with error message and right with four hard word like. Yes. Right. Yes. Huh? Yeah, left. Uh, yeah, left, hard, uh, every message hard coded. Yeah. That should be right X. X. Oh, right X. Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This meant to be see you guys paying attention. <laughs> All right. Uh, I guess you get the idea. Uh, but this one is recorded uh, right bias. Uh, either because previously either wasn't you can't just either and then dot map you, you can't but you, you get it later so what happened if is a uh, if a third party right I hate for came from a third party there's nothing much you can do there's nothing much you can do about it you just wrap a try over it right if it doesn't throw an exception you multiply by two and it's a success right if an exception then it will stop there and then it come back with a failure and I hit for right the one thing here is the functions intention are clear so if you look at it you look at I hit for option means that there's a chance that I won't get a value if I look at it as idle that means there's a chance I get a value there's a chance I get a something else whether be a, a description string or some other value so try basically just say that okay this this thing will throw an exception so try is, is not it's not a monad because you feel the monad loss even though you have map and flat map All right right goes on and that's how how it is yeah it's well it's pretty useful not to say not to not to say not to use it it's pretty useful right? you just know that what are you putting inside and so, sometimes there's uh, some fringe errors then you know where to look for hmm has it ever bothered you that try is not a monad? Right. Has it ever bothered you that try is not a monad, like when writing code? Uh, no. Using try? No, it doesn't. Uh, and 
that it fails one of the Mahmud Because because the moment try is is like uh, try try to interface with, with Java code. Because it's a norm in Java, right? You throw exceptions. So when you interface with Java code or Java library, you use try. If it, if it require, you require use try. Once it's out from there, you are immediately convert to something else. So it's it's an interface layer, la, right? Hopefully, that small gap, I'm lucky over. I'm lucky over it, la, right? So far, so, so far, I'm lucky. So fine. But the, these are the things because it's run on JVM. You you can't do much, right? Unlike Has Haskell, that is actually everything from grounds up is different. Maybe dot. Uh, maybe the uh, non dotty. The other one, the uh, native native Scala. Maybe it's better. Uh, I don't know. Which monad law does try violate? I'm not too sure. I think it's something to do with the flat map for success. I think yeah. flat map. You you throw an exception in either in success or in the flat map when you do when you flat mapping. Flat map a failure. Yeah, flat map failure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm. So I guess later on you're going to show the alternative. To uh no. Nah. <laughs> Did I? Oh, okay. No, I don't. <laughs> I would assume you'd get there. We'll see. We'll see. Okay. Uh, like he said, I, I have no problem, so I didn't go that far. <laughs> okay. Okay, let's see what, what you mean. Okay. All right, next. So I think one, one, one thing always came out is uh, recursion. Right? Recursion. So, and then, and then uh, when I first started off, I, 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 it's very hard for me to use recursion because uh, I seldom use recursion. I use a lot of for loop, which is not, which is not uh, immutable. For loop is mutable because it keeps changing the i, right? So this is just an example. It's a Fibonacci sequence. So you give 0 and 1, then you get the least of 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, all right? But this function is still a pure function because the variables are contained within the function. It didn't get leaked out, all right? Or you could do it the other way, uh, the other way using recursion, which is uh, simpler. So you just have, okay, this x minus 2 is just, I think it's, I, I don't want to think too much about it because of the first two elements. If I put, uh, immediately you find a bug if, if I put uh, one or zero, I will return two values for you, which you are actually expecting one value. So eight here means I'm expecting eight elements to be returned. If I put uh, zero or one, then you will return two values. Okay, so here, this is just the uh, recursion. So first, I start off with a list of one and two, uh, one and zero. So whenever uh, what do you call that the uh, count uh, counter, yeah. So whatever, whatever the I keep count, keep reducing it, and it's less than one. I return whatever I collected accumulated. Otherwise, I will call recursively back to this function, underscore FIPS is an inner function. Right? This is the main function. This is an inner function. So the counter minus 1. So this is a Fibonacci calculation. You put a B, A plus B, and A plus B, add to the accumulator. Right? They keep going on until the counter is less than one, then you return accumulator. But if you return accumulator, the problem with this is the way you add it, you can see that it's actually 13853210. So I do a reverse and I get this. All right? So uh, instead of doing this, unless you have to, try do this. This is actually using a for loop. All right? Okay, then even better, you use the built-in functions, All right? Uh, lazy list is, is the, I don't, I don't really um, aware of this, but uh, 
if you have used stream, then lazy list is, is the stream replacement uh, for Scala 2013. It works on the high level, works as a, like streams. Uh, yep. So here, well, basically it just says that uh, I have start with a zero, I start with a one, just add, just add these two uh, together and form the third element. Here is recursively go back to this. So I think it take a bit of uh, uh, acrobats to my acrobats to, to try to wrap this around. I, I, I have trouble wrapping this around for, for some time. So, but what I'm trying this what I'm trying to say here is, if you have a built-in function, use a built-in function. Don't do recursion. Right? Or do recursion only you have to. And worst case, you you have to use uh, mutable variables. Depends. Right? That's. So because if you use the built-in function, you get bonuses. Like for example, you want to sum all odds Fibonacci number less than two million. If this just one line, right? If come back to this, either of this, either of this function, I have to program it, right? I've recorded myself. So why not I just use the built-in functions? Because the built-in functions they, they build a lot of fundamentals function for you, so that you could compose them, mix and match. All right. Okay. So, well, functions are total pure, total, and deterministic. Pure functions are a lot easier to test because all the elements are there, all the parameters are there. So use recursion instead of loops, you build in functions whenever possible instead of writing custom functions. Okay, so if a function that doesn't, doesn't take a value or doesn't return a value, right? well, it's likely they are impure functions because it doesn't make sense to re not return anything or not accepting anything, right? So, but then the thing is, pure functions are useless. <laughs> they make a machine warm, right? That's seriously, right? So, what's the next thing you're gonna do, right? So, at least these functions are not pure. At least I has, has, has some value, like for example, I can get a random number between one to 10, right? Here, at least I get to print something out. All right. printing, printing is not, it's not pure, right? Printing to, to the screen is not pure. And then here, at least I can write to the disk. So what this leads to? Well, I guess you know the answer. I.O. Mona. Uh, I.O. Mona is, uh, this, uh, look at it differently. It's a demarcation, probably there's, some definition for it, but I look at it as a demarcation for where the pure function ends and side effects begins, right? So that's where you see, okay, you see, like, like you see the previous functions, is the, int the intention is very clear. Options means either you get it or you don't. Either you get something or you get some other message, uh, a message, right? So for IO mana, it means that, oh, okay, this guy is going to do IO. All right. So here, I the I/O monad actually principally is very simple. You just have a monad, right? You have map, flat map, and these are the implementations. Then, if I put string, if I put print something to to string uh, to screen, right? I will do. I put it inside the I/O, and I do it. Okay. Uh, if I get something from the user, I do I put the read line into the I/O. But one thing you look at is, is these are lazy functions. They are not called immediately, right? If you look at here, the definition here, right? This means that you need to invoke it before you actually it get it get called. Right? So print print line here doesn't print anything yet, okay? So well since the for comprehension works because as for comprehension doesn't matter if you're monad or not. For comprehension works as long as you have flat map and map, that's it. All right? So here's who the string is who are you. So you go into a function and go to here and it says that print who are you. Right? 
So get string line, basically you get input. So then you get a name, which is a string, right? String. The next thing is you have hello so and so. But again, these are not executed yet. Alright? It's still a value. Or in this case it's, it's a fun well, it's, it's still not executed yet. So to execute it, you need to say dot unsafe run. This implementation I/O is very, 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 very simple. To actually, you actually use cat effect I/O because there's a lot of other things that build into it. Because if you use this, this can be used to a certain extent, and you sometimes you are too deep down in the flat map, you will get stack overflow. Right? I'm talking about not 10, 20, but you have like thousands because. Functional programming is about composing, right? Sometimes you don't know how far it compose. So it could be very deep down before you you actually get executed. So you use a cat IO or a cat effect IO. Uh, it actually take care of all these things for you. So this one is just for illustrative illustrative purposes. But the function is about the same. Okay, so how do we use it, right? So here I have random, black or red. Again, random is unpure because why? Because it always returns a different value, right? So well, here is I simplify it. Black or red depends, right, on the boolean. So I think oh yeah okay. So here is one. Greeting is one function by itself already. So I'm actually defining a second function, right? So the second function here is guess again. I want someone to guess the color, okay? Name someone, pick a color, black or red. So here is expect him or her to key in red, red or black, right? So if the color is what, what it is, what is the color here, then I quit, right? So I do nothing. Basically, do nothing. And else, guess again, go up here and run through again. So now I want to guess a color. So, how do I compose these two together, these three functions together? I have greetings, I have black or red, and then I have a guess again. It's not run yet. So, funny when I run it, okay, here. Right, you put John Doe, hello John Doe, and you pay color. Say now the system, the random is the, the the system has picked red, but you give black. So you go back again and ask again and key in red and then ex exits the function. Right. If you keep typing black, it will just keep on going on. This is just a simple composition. So then the greeting is not lost, you still can call greetings. Right? And then greeting is much simpler, just three two lines. Get a name, greets you, done. So I also solve one very important problem for me, which is the uh, logging. Because logging is impure, uh, impure. And I can do that, right? This is pretty much like your Java code. You get a logger, logger, and then you inform, and then you do a greeting, the, the previous function, you get a name, print string line, you print out to the screen, and you log info again to you greeted so and so. Then you run it, right? Then, of course, there are some who prefer to use uh, writer, writer monad, which basically saying that when you run through the functions, like writer monad actually give you the, the ability to store the message and store the value. Store the message meaning that he will keep a list of the message. On the other side, the value, he will only keep one. So we keep on accumulating. So you see both one, okay? So we go, go back to the same 
function, uh, the similar function, both one. So both one here says, I have a list, says and give one, and a one. Says two, says two means just log, just tell, just keep a, keep a string, okay? Just keep a string. So these two will be together in a list. So on give two, they actually you give the value two here. Right? So the third one is both. We say that I have a string and I have a value. So A here become one, B becomes two, C becomes three. Finally, I add up A, B, and C is six. So the six will be added, will be, will be just collapsed, accumulated as one value. So after that, when you run this, all right, uh, Actually, I don't need. I don't need this. Sorry, I don't need this. If I run this, right, I will get. Uh, I print the list. I I I itemize each item in the list and print it out, right. So I got says gives one, says two, says and gives three. So if I want the value, which is this, I say underscore two. So writer has two two value underscore one underscore two. This, uh, you can read more about this in under writer mono. And you see this, uh, I'm using cats, so that I don't have to define all these things. These are very fundamental. They are state monads, writer monad, reader monads. All these things are already defined in, in, in cats. And I think in order to use them, you have to understand why you want to use them, why you need them. Then it becomes a lot easier. Because once you understand, then you start writing it, then you find that, hey, I need to write a lot of boilerplate. Then that's where cats come in or Scala Z comes in to clear all, most of the stuff, or at least whatever in the uh, Scala library, those lease options, all these are taken care of. At least they, they have a, a, a type class for all these common functions, common structures. All right. Okay. Actually, I was kidding the way you you do blogging this way is actually the better way this is the better way of course but this is uh, a lot a lot more difficult uh, for for first time you really want to go to I or not but this this the this is the answer that uh, suppose is supposed to be right as you can see again uh, I use a lot of cats and the logger itself actually depends on cats so you make it so as 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 you go on then you you have you find a a, a suite of libraries that cater for functional scala but of course uh, most of the thing begins with cats or zio now the latest trend right but on the high level or on the user level is the is the same conceptually they are the same the usage is about the same the concept is the same all right. Uh, yeah, Bob, this this uh this one on the style called tagless final the the way you is written. So, so you see this the, the thing why you want to write this way is the is is almost it's pure but it's imperative. It's style imperatively but it's a pure func uh, pure function. So, well, uh, then come to the end. So, uh, abstraction allows us to extend our code, like plugs in. You feel like plugs in, you can easily plug in the place where you want, you want to ch uh, change the output to, to be different. And yeah, you let cats and cats effect do the heavy lifting and take care of complex stuff like concurrency and parallelism. Because I, uh, in this talk, it's very simple, it's just, because IO mana is very deep, and there are a lot of functions, and it doesn't, it not even go to uh, a bit of concurrency. But when you go to parallel part, actually, it's actually um, there's another library to take over it, but also based on IO, which also based on cats. So yeah, uh, thank you very much. So. Uh, any questions? No? 
So did I answer your question? <laughs> No? Okay. So uh, mm. you use all these principles in your work, right? Ah, unfortunately, no. No? No. I, it's hard to, hard, hard to get people to uh, more, more, more Java++ plus plus style, style. Use a lot of filters, use a lot of map and stuff like that. Like a fluent API kind of thing. When it comes to this, very zero. As far as I concern, zero. Okay. Right. Because what is your motivation for this? What is mine? What, what is your so it sounds like you work in a team that does the Java plus plus version of Scala. Hmm. What is your to maybe help sell cats to the wider audience? What is your motivation for programming? Uh, oh okay. My motivation is I uh I just want, want to write code that only write when, I, when, when it's right, I only want to write once if possible. I mean, it's not possible, but this, right? This is what I imagine. So if once the code is right, I write it, I keep it there. So I keep on adding codes to it, right? So that it changed by adding codes, not changed by modifying codes. So because once you have a sizable project, right? You do a lot of testing, a redone on it. So Whenever you, let's say you, the, the project had run for two years, the moment you change the code, right, the thing actually dropped back to zero, right? The, the reliability dropped back to zero because you changed something. Right? How can you reliably say that this thing still work? Even you change one variable, it's, how can you say it work, right? So my motivation to do this is, is there, is there a way to like, keep adding codes but not changing the original code? Right? I think to some extent, if the code base is large enough, even though how good you do it, you still have to tear down and, and do it again. But hopefully, that's pretty long time. Okay. And so, um, I mm -hmm. it, it defers our side effects to yes. the end of the world. Yes. So instead of performing the side effects immediately, when, when it's, it's called, mm -hmm. we defer that until mm -hmm. we call unsafe front seat or unsafe front. So your benefit, the benefit, saying, like, feeding off of like what you just said, making software more maintainable, you only have to write it once, mm. is that now it's more testable, right? Yes. Because you can, you can test the return type of your function. Yes. Exactly. Mm. Yep. But, the, uh, but that has nothing to do with, the testability has nothing to do with IO or not, right? It's do, you do, you do, you do. It, it actually go, it, it do your the functions. The of that is writing it is purity. Yes, correct. Yes, it is yes. Avoiding side yes, purity. And it programs always. You're going to have to affect someone. Yeah, you have to, right? Like how you have to, right? Yes, correct. So I know it gives you a better way to handle side effects. Correct. Safer correct. And it. Therefore, it gives you a more testable way, and it allows you to handle side effects in a more pure way. Yep. Maybe it would help to also give the analog of I/O versus future. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I guess. Yeah. Can we go back to the I/O night slide? Sure. Where we have the guest thing. Uh, which one? Uh, yes. So. Is this code correct? You have a in the function guess again. You have a tail recursive annotation. Oh, and yeah. the guess again method is called inside a flat map. Mm. Did you combine this? I didn't run it. I think <laughs> me. Yeah, you got a point there. Yeah. May not be right, but uh, because because this one I just write it okay. uh, on the slide. Okay. So I assume because I just off the cuff. I just assume if I return the same value as what is returned, usually is usually is. But yeah, but you this is inside a flat map, so the tail recursive annotation I think will not does not work. Yeah, okay. Compile it will throw in a maybe. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Could could be. Right. Well, good good catch. Okay. Uh, any more questions? 
Thank you very much.